This is my Cyborg Voron 0.2 that's quickly coming up on its one year anniversary. Overall, I've been really happy with this little printer and still think the V0 is a solid machine for pumping out parts. My original plan was to add a handful of mods to it, but so far it just hasn't happened. Well, today we're going to start on that journey by swapping out the tool head from the mini stealth burner to the dragon burner. This is an upgrade I've been dying to do ever since I saw Maple Leaf Maker's video on it, and I've had the V6 parts on my desk staring at me for a lot longer than I care to admit. In this video, we will be diving into the Dragon Burner toolhead. We'll go over what it is, why you might want it, and go through the process of upgrading my little V0. So, with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. With over a decade of experience, PCBWay offers reliable, high quality PCB prototyping and fabrication with super fast turnaround times. Bring your projects to life with CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. I recently ordered 20 PCBs to use for an upcoming Nerf inspired blaster project that I've been wanting to build for years. With as few as 5 and as many as 10,000 board order quantities, PCBWay has you covered for any project, big or small. Use the link in the description to get a $5 credit towards your first order today. Starting with the what, Dragon Burner is a tool head created by Chirpy for both Vorons and printers for ants. For anyone not familiar with Printers for Ants, these are basically shrunken down Voron or Voron inspired passion projects, often using small 1515 extrusions. They are adorable and I highly recommend taking a further look at them. From its initial release in April of 2022, Dragon Burner has seen a ton of changes and improvements. At the time of recording, the current version is V8. Compared to the mini stealth burner, it uses larger 4010 blower fans for part cooling has two optional nozzle LEDs and a logo LED, supports a massive range of hot ends and extruders, and is compatible with a few probes. I really like the external top mounted extruder design, especially for troubleshooting. For my build, I'm using the Fisec CNC Sherpa Mini Extruder, and I'll be reusing the Bamboo Lab hot end that's currently inside the mini stealth burner. For part cooling, I'm going with GDS Time 3010 blowers and a 3010 Honey Badger fan for the heatsink. I'd planned on using sequence RGB LEDs that my buddy Polar Ted sent to me, but that was back when the current version was the V6. These are brighter than the standard single version due to them having three LEDs per PCB, but changes to how they mount on the V8 made me go with NeoPixels for both the nozzle and logo LEDs. I was tempted to play around with one of the probe options available, but ultimately ended up sticking with manual leveling. There's some CFD analysis available in the GitHub repository showing the effects of changes made to the cooling ducts from the V7 to V8 version, along with a few overhang tests. These are pretty cool to see and clearly show the improvements made from the previous version. When it came time to print out all the parts for the V8, I was actually a little confused. I didn't remember there being nearly as many options the last time I printed out parts, and there was also a sweet web tool for the previous version. This lets you select your setup with a live updating 3D model and made it really straightforward. I'd love to see this updated to the V8 version in the future. The printing section of the GitHub page does a pretty good job of spelling out what you'll need. The first is a cowl, and unless you want the cat ears option, the only real options here are what probe you're planning on using, so I went with the no probe version. Then you have your hot end mount, which is straightforward enough. For the extruders, some extruders come with multiple options depending on the hot end you're using, which is why they are given a folder, but for the others, just select the STL for what you're using. Depending on whether you use LEDs and what type, there are a few options here, like the carrier type for the logo LED that needs to be printed in an opaque filament, along with the diffuser in a clear filament. There's also sequence or NeoPixel mounts if you decide to install nozzle LEDs. A few other files in the GitHub may be needed, like toolhead board mounts and soldering jigs, but these are mostly optional and will depend on your hardware choices. For printing, the recommendation is ABS or ASA as a minimum and using the default Voron printing parameters. You can find these in any Voron build guide and the official docs under sourcing information. 
None of these are very complicated to print out, but if you're going to be going with the nozzle LEDs, I highly recommend printing out a few extras of the holder. Due to the way that these little guys print, the layer lines on the arms stick out, making it super easy for you to snap them off if you apply just a little too much force. Once it's in place, it's not an issue at all, but due to how small and quick those little parts print out, I think it's a good idea to have at least one or two extra on hand. For my install, in addition to swapping tool heads, I also planned to go from umbilical to CAN bus. Before anyone asks, no, I do not think CAN bus is necessary or as beneficial on a small printer like the V0. However, the Cyborg kit came with the Fly Gemini V3 board that has built-in CAN functionality, and due to me wanting to install an auxiliary fan along with a bento box mini filter, I needed to free up some fan ports. I already had CAN working with a Fly SHT36 from many months back and just needed to install it on a tool head. Removing the mini stealth burner is fairly simple due to it only being held in place with three screws. A really nice thing about the Dragon Burner is that it has the exact same mounting points as the Mini Stealth Burner, so you don't have to undo your belts or change anything with the X Carriage mount. Assembling the Dragon Burner is pretty straightforward. The GitHub page provides an exploded CAD view, along with a fair bit of instructions for things like heat insert locations, wire routing for the LEDs, details about the fans, and some general tips for areas that might not be obvious. I wouldn't exactly say it's step by step due to the variations in hardware you might be using, but it's enough that it should fill in the blanks if you have any questions. If you don't go with LEDs, the install is greatly simplified, but if you're like me and are a sucker for lights, it's worth getting them set up. The nozzle LEDs have printable jigs for both types of supported LEDs. These let you pop your LEDs into them and give you the exact length you need to solder wires between them. Even with a jig, it took a bit of effort to get the wires to play nicely, but I highly recommend using them to ensure the distance between those LEDs match perfectly with their mount in the tool head. For whatever reason, one of my NeoPixels fit really snugly inside of that carriage, while the other one was just a little bit loose. I ended up just pulling the wires connected to it a little bit tighter to sort of force it in place, but if you have a bit of super glue, adding just a tiny drop is probably not a bad idea. All three fans friction fit nicely, and the little cross beam that gets added in the end does a really nice job of adding a brace to the back of the tool head. In the GitHub repository are links for printable standoffs and a mount that works for both Big Tree Tech and the Fly 36 tool head boards. I tried using little aluminum standoffs that I had on hand, which generally I like a bit more due to their rigidity, but they weren't the right length, so I ended up just going with the included printed standoffs. Once assembled, I spent some time cutting and crimping all electronic wires to the tool head board. The Dragon Burner gets installed back onto the carriage using the exact same three screws that secured the mini stealth burner in place. There's also a handful of other mount options if you're using a bigger Voron printer or something like Tap or Boop. After I hooked everything up, all that was left was to update my config with the pinout for the Fly SHT board, run a PID tune for the hot end, and configure the RGB LEDs. I ended up just copying much of it, including the macros over from the full size stealth burner LED config, but I still need to configure some of these statuses correctly. There's a link in the Dragon Burner GitHub to the Clipper LED effect plugin, Adam from Vector 3D covered a while back, which is another great option for customizing the LEDs. Although I've only had the Dragon Burner in this V0 for the better part of a week, I already love it. From the larger cooling fan to the awesome LEDs, it looks and performs great. My only real regret is waiting so long to finally convert a printer over to it. With its wide range of hardware compatibility and a tool changer being modeled around it, I only see the popularity of Dragon Burner continuing to grow. And that has been the Dragon Burner. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of the questions that you might have had about this tool head. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are if you plan on trying this out or if you're already running the Dragon Burner, what your experience has been like. I'll have a link in the description over to the GitHub repository for anyone that wants to take a further look. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. If you do want to support the channel further, I'll have a link down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.